Hello, my name is Michael Watson. I'm a composer and music producer, and I'm teaching you through the Ableton Live manual. And today I'm looking at return tracks. So sometimes you're going to have various tracks that you want to have processed in the same way. For instance, if you want to put reverb on, say, five different string tracks that you have, instead of putting reverb on each individual track, you can just root them all to this return track here and put reverb on them like that. So I've got these two random string tracks, and I want them both to have some reverb on them. So if you move your mouse to the right here, make sure this S is active. This gives you this send box, which I'll explain to you in a moment what that is. And also make sure your R here is enabled, which gives you your return tracks. And also make sure this IO is enabled, which gives you your audio in and out. You might not need the audio in and out, but I'm going to explain a scenario to you in which case you do need this box, even though you're using return tracks. So I've got these two string tracks. I want them both to have reverb. So I need to choose one track with a reverb to send them to. So by default, Ableton gives you this A reverb track. This A is literally just something to make it easier to find. So if I go to my sends over here, you can see A, B, and C, and this A, B, and C corresponds to your A reverb, B delay, C, E, Q. So A, A, B, B, C, C. So you can map it easily. Okay, so this reverb track has a reverb on it already. If you created your own return track, which you can just do by going Alt Command T or right clicking in an empty area and clicking on insert return track, you can also just drag your own audio effect into the return track as though it were any other track. Drag it in. All right, but I'm just gonna use this default one for now. I want this to go to A and I want this to go to A2. So what I am doing here is I'm choosing how much of the string signal I'm sending to this return track. If I want the full signal to have reverb on it, then I'll send all of it. But if I only want a tiny little sliver of reverb, I can choose to only send a little bit of the track. I'll show you the difference now. Let's hit play. So the effect is subtle when you only change the signal on these two things because this dry signal, so these two string tracks are still playing. But when you're going through a return track, typically you've got your normal dry signal and then this extra signal on top of it. But now if you want only to hear the signal that comes out of the return track, so you don't want to hear your dry signal that comes out of here as well as your return track, that's when you need this in out box. So that's why I needed you to highlight this. As you can see, this track gets its audio from external input. So right now I'm just getting it from the sample and it sends it to somewhere. It sends it to my master track, which is this track over here. But it, it's also sending it to this A track via my sends box over here. So here's my gorgeous diagram. So you've got red signals and white signals. So the two white signals coming out of the two audio tracks are going to your return track and they're kind of being funneled into one signal that goes through the effect that you've got in your effects rack on the return track and that goes to your master track. But if your audio is set to master in your in out settings, you've also got your two raw dry signals that are your two red arrows that go through your track and any other effects that you have on that and then straight to your master. And that's why you're hearing your dry signal as well as the return track signal. But if I only wanted to go to the sends track, then I need to go to audio two over here and change that to sends only. So here you can only see the white signal and that's because you are routing the audio that's coming from your audio tracks and you're only routing it to your return track and that goes straight to your master. So you're essentially cutting out that dry signal that was also there in my previous example. Let's hear the difference. Can any of you figure out why it's so soft? It's really soft because I'm only sending a tiny bit of signal from this string track and I'm sending no signal from this track. So this signal is going no way essentially because I'm telling it to go to the sends but I'm not sending anything to the sends. So as I increase the signal, you'll start hearing more. You can still change these volume faders over here. The louder this signal is going to be, the more amplified the signal that you're sending to this return track is going to be and that's why you can still hear it go louder even though I'm not fiddling with this reverb volume fader. If you look at your master track over here you see these post buttons and if you click them it goes to pre buttons. If you set this to pre then this return track taps each clip's track signal pre fader so before it hits the fader over here. If it's post 
that means that the signal will hit this return track after its fader. So in this way, you can see that this button corresponds to my A track, this corresponds to my B send, this corresponds to my C send and D send. If I add another one, so Alt Command T, another one pops up E and I've got another fader. So you can choose for each return track whether or not it'll be post or pre fader send. And finally, what on earth is the difference between grouping tracks like this and using this as like a return track or just using one of these dedicated return tracks? Because essentially, I could have also just slapped a reverb on here and had the same result. Well, return tracks are designed specifically to be used as sends. So you've got this whole extra panel here to easily manage your send levels, which in a group track, it's still simple, but it's just a little bit more niggly because you have to configure this here as well. Grouping tracks are more designed for keeping things looking neat. So yeah, you can do group processing, but I like to use grouping tracks just to keep things neat, as you can see in this project that I've been working on. Another tip that I've found out just from my own personal experience is that grouping tracks is great for minimal processing. So if I've got tons of hi-hats and I want them all to have a specific low pass filter, then it's really easy to just put an EQ on the group track instead of doing a whole return track thing. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to help you. If you don't want to miss out, please hit that little notification bell so that you get emails when I post videos and have a lovely day.